You will get the most from any Systems to Win video when you launch it from its video home page. Processing time is the time a product is being worked on by an operator. The formula for processing time is time doing valuable work plus time walking plus time waiting. Note that machine time is not included in processing time. If the operator has nothing better to do than stand around and wait for the machine to finish doing its thing, then that's called wait time. And wait time is included in processing time. Just remember that processing time is all about the operator and not the machine. Using your time observation worksheet, you follow one unit being processed by one operator all the way through the process. The important point here is that process time is observed. It is not derived from old routings or old work standards. You go out to the Gemba and actually observe with your own eyes. Your Systems to Win templates provide you with several choices to observe different types of processes in different ways for different purposes. Traditionally, the most popular approach is to use the Time Observation Worksheet. The Time Observation Worksheet is a Word template, not Excel. It's designed to be printed and used on a clipboard with a pencil, actually observing the workers at the Gamba and doing their job. Some people prefer to enter their time observation data directly into the standard work template which gives you the option of doing stopwatch observations or video time observations. If you're not doing video time observations, just hide those columns. And you can hide or unhide columns for up to 10 stopwatch time observations. And the math will correctly adjust for any number of time observations to calculate the second fastest repeatable time, both the median and the mean average time. You can also uh, do value add analysis here as well as even adjust for operator proficiency levels if you happen to be observing a new hire or a superstar. And if you're using any kind of application on your phone or your iPad, it's real easy for Excel to reach out and grab that data to do analysis that you couldn't possibly do on a phone. Now, if you're looking at not just time, but also observing types of waste as you're observing the process, in other words, you're doing a waste walk, then you would use your process observation worksheet instead. So any one of those three forms are valid ways of observing process time, following one unit, processed by one operator, all the way through a process. Now another way of observing that same process is to observe cycle times and then you would use this form instead. So what's a cycle time? The layman's definition for cycle time is the average time between completed units coming out the end of your process. For example, it might take hours or days to build each automobile, but one car might roll off the end of the assembly line every few minutes. If you have a labor-intensive process with only one operator, then cycle time equals processing time. And because those conditions are so common, it's easy to understand how so many people get cycle time and processing time confused. In fact, those conditions are so common that our value stream map starts out with only process time showing. Everything to do with cycle time starts out hidden. And then if needed, you can optionally unhide those rows. And why would you do that? Because there are many conditions where cycle time and processing time can be very different. Let's talk about three of them. When you have a process being worked on by multiple operators, it is very rare to balance workloads perfectly between operators. So if our goal is for everyone to work to the same drumbeat pace of tack time, then every worker other than the one with the longest processing time naturally will have some extra wait time as they wait for the next cycle of work to come around. 
Your standard work combination chart makes that relationship so graphically obvious. In this case, we have three operators, and the second one has the longest uh, cycle time. And it automatically draws the green cycle time line for that operator. And that it better be less than your red tack time, or you're not going to meet your schedule. Your Yamazumi template is another way of similarly analyzing value-add components of cycle time for each of your operators. So with your Systems to Win templates, you have an entire suite of tools for analyzing cycle times in different ways for different purposes. Now most of those tools are focused on the detailed process level while your value stream map is the right tool for analyzing the interrelationships between interrelated processes. So back on our value stream map, we have unhidden the row for the number of workers. And notice that right now the number of workers is 1, so process time is equal to cycle time. Remember the one and only condition where process time and cycle time are identical is a labor-intensive process, only one operator. But if we change the number of workers to 2, then cycle time is approximately half of processing time. Now a value stream map was never intended to be near as precise as a standard work combination sheet or a functional flow chart, so it's approximate. Now if it's important for you to get it right, because it's really 18 seconds and that means a whole lot to you, then if you click the pop-up help, then the help will tell you that you can actually manually override in the cell to the right of each process. In any calculation that you manually override, we highlight in pink to make it real obvious that you did that. One common time to override cycle time is when you have a machine-intensive process where the operator does little or nothing while the machine does most of the work. And make sure that you understand the difference between machine time versus machine cycle time. You're not entering machine time. You're entering machine cycle time. This might be a good time to remind you that you are watching a video. You can use everything you know about videos to pause and rewind if you don't catch anything the first time through. Rather than just manually plugging in a manually uh, calculated or observed cycle time, you also have the option to unhide these extra rows. And the pop-up help for cycle time explains that cycle time can be calculated as time per cycle divided by quantity per cycle. And the last situation that we'll bring to your attention where cycle time and processing time are even more radically different is when you have a process that requires curing or drying or settling or some other non-machine process that does not require an operator but prevents the product from moving on to the next operation for a while. That's when you use process lead time, which is demonstrated in our lead time video. So although it is not uncommon for processing time and cycle time to result in the same number, you should now be well educated enough not to confuse these two related but different concepts. So what is this effective cycle time and why does it have the exact same value as cycle time? Well that's because we have not yet unhidden these additional rows that contain factors that might affect our ability to meet our schedule. Factors like changeovers and factors that affect productivity. For example, if we have 2% rework, then effective cycle time is no longer identical to simplistic cycle time. And if we also have an average of 3% scrap, for instance, then the bold red andons turn on to warn us that we're not going to meet our schedule because effective cycle time is greater than tack time. Regular cycle time is less, but we're not going to meet our schedule. Now when people first see all of these factors that can affect productivity, sometimes they tend to get a little bit overwhelmed and say, gosh, we'll never use all of that. 
Let's say you're in the medical industry and you say, gosh, we are never going to have scrap. And you might be right, but you know what to do. Simply hide the factors that aren't relevant to your environment. And then you might say, unplanned downtime. We don't even have equipment. That's irrelevant. But be careful. Before you just go hiding things, you might want to read the pop-up help. Staff not being available when needed. Hmm. So your nurses are always 100% instantly available every time they're needed. Is that true? Or what about this guaranteed turnaround time? What if your lab was able to use lean tools and methods to be able to guarantee that every time you requested any type of lab report, you knew it would be available within X number of hours? Would that be interesting? So remember, when you first hit that button to open a blank template sheet, your blank value stream map will start out with very few rows unhidden. And for that matter, a lot of people will even hide the rows for work time available because often you don't even need to play with that. And remember that for a large number of value streams, process time and cycle time are identical. So there is no reason to unhide any of those extra rows unless and until you need them. So you can start with a stripped down value stream that is as simple as you need it to get your bearings. But isn't it comforting to know that you are becoming competent using a tool that you will never outgrow? Okay, let's summarize. Processing time is fundamentally a very simple concept. Using your time observation worksheet, you follow one unit being processed by one operator all the way through the process. Machine time is not included in processing time because processing time is all about the operator. Although processing time and cycle time can sometimes be identical, there are other times when they can be very different. When it comes to measuring processing time and cycle time, standard work is a more precise tool than value stream mapping. Thank you for choosing Systems to Win to help you continuously improve your tools for continuous improvement.